Recently, a channel called Dialect published a video about the problems of special relativity. And the main issue he discussed exactly? in his video was and the relativity of acceleration. According to the creator of the video, special relativity has one fundamental defect to this day, and it is the need for absolute acceleration. But why we need absolute acceleration in the first place? Well, because without the absolute acceleration, the twin paradox would be unsolvable, as there will be no way to tell which twin changed its frame of reference and there will be no way to tell which one should end up younger. We need something to break the symmetry of twin paradox and it is the acceleration. But according to dialect, absolute acceleration is undefinable in a current physics. The answer to this problem is to define absolute acceleration as meaning acceleration relative to an inertial frame. But of course, inertial frames are defined via an absence of acceleration. So this definition is horrifically circular. So the argument of the creator is this. Special relativity is based on a postulate that states the light travels at the same speed relative to all inertial observers. But inertial observer is defined by absence of acceleration. But how to define acceleration then? The only way to have absolute acceleration is to define it relative to inertial frame. But this definition brings us back to the definition of inertial observer. So the problem is this. We need acceleration to define inertial frame. But we need inertial frame to define acceleration. So there is a clear circular conflict in this. Since we can't define acceleration through inertial frames, we have to do it some other way. And the usual way how it is done is through accelerometer, which is basically a mass attached to a strings. And if we measure deviation from the center, we say we are in accelerated frame. But the dialect has also problems with this definition. Unfortunately, since any measuring instrument first has to be calibrated before it can give meaningful readings, given a spring accelerometer, we'd have to make a choice of where and when to calibrate it before we could use it. And should we choose to calibrate it on a rocket ship that, unbeknownst to us, was blasting through outer space, then as soon as the rocket engines shut off, the spring would stretch, leading us to wrongly conclude that we had begun experiencing a force. But this is where probably many of you become suspicious about his arguments. Because it is not very hard to argue that even though you try to calibrate the accelerometer under acceleration, you could still do it, and it is simply due to the fact that the acceleration is a vector and it can have only one overall direction and length. So let's build such an accelerator by ourselves. We have three components. Rigid outer box, massive ball and four identical strings that have the same length in one particular direction. Now if we connect the strings to the ball and to the box, we would immediately detect anisotropy. We had the strings of the same length at the start, right? Now we don't, and we can easily detect the direction of acceleration. Apparently, I was able to detect acceleration without calibrating my device, right? Yeah, I kinda calibrated it at the start by taking four identical strings with the same length in one particular direction made from the same material. And I didn't need any inertial frame to calibrate it. After all, all of this should be kinda obvious. If there was an acceleration, the string length would depend on the orientation, which is a clear sign of anisotropy in space. According to Noether's theorem, every symmetry is connected to a certain conserved quantity. And if you have an isotropic space, the quantity that is conserved is called momentum. And this is huge because acceleration creates anisotropy in space, and therefore the momentum is no longer conserved along that particular direction. This should be however obvious because if you are in a rocket ship accelerating near a very massive object, from your point of view the massive object is accelerating relative to you. So it's gaining a huge amount of momentum, which is a clear sign that there is something wrong with your interpretation of acceleration. From the point of view of the star, the acceleration of your ship is caused by a reactive force 
of the rocket fuel and the total change of the momentum is zero. So it is clear for everyone that it is your ship that is accelerating. What Einstein was referring to in his 1914 paper is simple acceleration of a body, which is acceleration without any cause. Mathematically, you can do whatever you want with your theory. And of course, acceleration without any cause can't be absolute without a unique frame of reference like ether. But in the end, you have to bring physics into your theory. And physics requires the conservation of momentum. And this conservation of momentum breaks the symmetry of relative acceleration. So to summarize, we can define inertial and non-inertial frame differently. Inertial frame means momentum conservation. Non-inertial frame, no momentum conservation. And now you don't have any circular definition of acceleration. All you need to do is to define momentum without the need for the word inertial. And to do that, you just need to measure the velocity and the mass of the object relative to you, no matter you are accelerating or not. But if you include gravity into the picture, it becomes much more complicated. As gravity pulls uniformly at every point of the accelerometer, and therefore if you were in a free fall in a gravitational field, you would detect zero acceleration. And therefore, you can have two objects accelerating towards each other without feeling any force. And this is the main issue Einstein had with acceleration in special relativity, because when you include gravity, it breaks up. The proposed solution by Einstein was to get rid of the mystical force called gravity completely and replace it by curved space-time, where objects travel in a straightest line possible but on a curved manifold which can create coordinate acceleration of two objects in space. So, did we lose the absoluteness of acceleration in general relativity? Well, no, because apart from coordinate acceleration, we have also quantity called proper acceleration. And it is basically acceleration relative to the free fall. And this quantity, the proper acceleration, is a thing you measure on your accelerometer and it is an absolute quantity. Therefore, it is not an apple that's pulled down to Earth. It is you accelerating towards the apple. If there was no electrostatic repulsion between you and the ground, you would continue along the geodesics in a curved space-time created by the massive body. But in terms of conserved quantities in general relativity, it is much more complicated because simple momenta is not going to be conserved in most of the cases. To find the conserved quantities in general relativity, you need to find symmetries of the space-time you are working with. And these symmetries are going to tell you which quantities are going to be conserved. And eventually, if you work on a particular problem, by conserving such quantities, you won't ever arrive at such paradoxical conclusion like twin paradox in special relativity caused by relative acceleration. So that was it for this video. If you like it, just press the like button, comment if you have anything to say, or just give an opinion, and I see you next time. And to be clear, I like dialect. I just disagree on this particular topic, otherwise I think it's really great channel and I think you should be following it.